Hello everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a good week until this point. Uh, I'm going to be straight into the point here. Uh, I spend a lot of time uh, putting in work in the black community in research, um, in problem solving, in program development, program implementation. Uh, the dissemination of information through lectures, uh, through um, these video segments that I do quite often. Uh, and I've been doing this in one way or another for over three decades. Um, I am passionate about my people. Uh, I have proven that in the consistency of my actions and the consistency of my message. I'm going to be straightforward with you here. I need your help uh, for a number of different reasons. I've told you for the last couple of weeks that I have embarked upon a study and research um, that after uh, I compile and uh, my findings, I am going to submit a report uh, on what I find to state legislatures uh, and lobby put together a lobby and pack to lobby for different policies and statutes that will allow for better resourcing and better access to treatment for young black males specifically, but also anyone that's dealing with anyone in the community that's dealing with uh, certain mental health issues uh, that deal with a dissociative disorder, uh, predominantly schizophrenia, bipolar disorder and things of that nature because I'm looking at the impact it has on the homeless community, thereby having an impact on the home home and uh, residents of our people, and then the outcomes, health outcomes, family outcomes, private prison, industrial complex, school to prison pipeline. All this stuff is impacted by these men who aren't getting the right treatment and ultimately will end up either homeless or in prison, and it's unacceptable. And it's time for them to stop being invisible. It's time for them to stop doing that. I need your support. I need you to give. Also, the list of young black males who are in need of support um, is growing. And I told you uh, a couple of years ago that we would only be able to service those that we would resource. We need to raise today with both of these programs alone $10,000. And I mean... Uh, we have so many things on the, and, and before I get that, let me tell you something. One of the things that, so we can get this out of the way, because I know it's coming. I know how people are. Let's get this out of the way. Whenever I'm talking about what's needed, whenever I'm talking about what needs to be done, when I'm talking about resourcing work. I either hear, Dr. Wallace, you can't do it all by yourself. Absolutely correct. Dr. Wallace, you need to focus on, you need to do this. And I get it. I do need to take care of myself. I do need to measure myself. But let me tell you something. Here's how I look at it. What if my great-grandparents, my grandfather at 58 when I was born, 60 by the time they completed the adoption process and I was two, uh, what if he and my great-grandmother decided, hey, man, we've reared your grandmother, we've reared your mom, uh, we can't do it. What if I was left uh, to be reared by, and, and, and nothing against my, my mom, uh, God rest her soul, um, but she was a teenage mom, pregnant with me when she was 14, had me when she was 15. What if I would have been left to that? What if my fourth grade uh, teacher, who happened to be my fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teacher in an accelerated learning class said, I don't feel like teaching this kid. Uh, handwriting because he's coming into my class fresh out of the third grade and I don't want to spend any time with it. What if she didn't? What if I didn't take on her attention to detail and expression? What if my seventh grade teacher, Mr. Brewer, what if my journalism teacher never took time to invest in me and convince me to write uh, the, the article, The Invisible Father, which ultimately became my first book and now we're on book number 27 which is the sequel to the first the invisible father uh legacy what if the people who showed up in my community and showed an interest in me outside of how fast i could run uh what if that didn't happen 
uh, people give of themselves. It's a part of the process. Uh, I'm not talking about killing myself, but I'm trying to get you to understand that the easy answer is not everybody can do it. And, you know, are go, you know, you, you can only do what you can do. Well, no, there's a lot more that can be done. We're simply not doing it. If we're honest with ourselves, we're not putting up anywhere close to what we can. We'll invest in what we want. The one thing I can tell you about my people is we invest in what we want. We spend $2.5 billion a year on Jordans. That's blacks. And despite being in last place in the socioeconomic uh, uh, caste system and, and, and being last in the race, uh, and I mean, this huge racial wealth gap with the whites who own 84% of somewhere around 177,000 in median household wealth and we're somewhere around 17,000, we buy uh, twice as many Mercedes Benzes as them. Uh, and we're entering into the sweet spot where they absolutely love us. You know why? Between now and Christmas Eve, we're going to spend $570 billion. $570 billion. But we're in last place. We're oppressed. We constantly complain. We're being over-policed. We're being miseducated. We're being mass incarcerated. We're being gentrified. In every area, we are suffering. And we look at, and that's why we're so fixated on celebrity worship because that's how we live we live vicariously through the few of us who are experiencing some level of success we live vicariously or we overspend and extend ourselves to get a piece of what we think is the true nature and meaning of power and the power comes from the autonomy to be able to do things on our own to be able to manage and move things in our favor to be able to make our presence felt and so it's there. It's that we have found a way to be dismissive of the needs of anything outside of something that uh, pertains to us. We become highly individualized in our thinking. I'm not talking about being uh, a group of people who all act and behave and, and, and do this. I'm talking when I talk about individualized, I mean, pretending that we're not. A collective pretending that we aren't treated uh, collectively differently than everybody else and not doing the things that are necessary to make the changes these are the things I'm talking about I've given you countless uh, countless uh, hours of research and findings and program development on generational trauma how to deal with it how to engage it how to handle it, how to treat it to deal with childhood sexual abuse been there adverse childhood experiences epigenetics and psychology i've gone on and on and i've brought in the programs i've worked and i've done it and um and it's just been constant and i will continue to do so i'm not going to kill myself doing it uh, but i am going to stick with it and i'm not going to accept well i'm doing the best i can as a final answer i'll do the best i can but i'm going to hold you to the fire because it's absolutely unacceptable that we're sitting here and the people who are actually putting in the work are the people who are pushed to the side for all the other bull crap that goes on that produces nothing. And for the people who want to say, have you tried getting funding through traditional means? Let me explain something. If that was the case, we would be said a long time ago, oh, you can get funding, but you're not going to get funding for programs that work because they don't want our people empowered. I've been telling you that for a while. You'll see programs that are literally pulling millions of dollars. And what happens? You get nothing. And here's the problem with that. This is why we need to be doing our own thing. Here's the problem with that. When we get funding, whether it's grant money, whether it's some kind of state or federal uh, funding, here's what happens. They pour it in. Um, they don't get the results they want. They say, we've poured millions and millions of dollars in that, and nothing happens. And so then the narrative is those people are just who they are. No matter how much money you pour in, and help, you can't help them. And what... They, what, what the average person isn't going to do is to look deeper and see what the problem is. The problem is I can put a billion dollars into a program where the linchpins of success aren't there 
and it's going to look good. It's going to be great for photo ops. It's going to be great for commercialism. It's going to be great for fundraising, but it's not going to produce results. Why? The linchpins for success have to be there. There are certain elements and components that have to be present for anything to work. And they're not always blatant and blaring. Sometimes they're very subtle. But if you remove the linchpins, you can sit up and fund as much as you want to and don't get any results. And so what you do is you create this cash cow. You wash people's money with our backs. Yeah, you, you, get, you get to run your money through uh, organizations that don't really empower anybody but look good. And you clean your money, you take your money, you go do what you want to do. And everybody's eating except the people you're supposed to be helping. This is going on consistently. I've been I've been sounding the alarm. Uh, the things that work will not get funded. Why? Because people benefit from our demise. People benefit from uh, our suffering. And it's up to us to fix, to fix that. Look. Um, I've got so many young black males that I want to take off the waiting list. I've got black families. I've got people who come to me. And some of you are people who have come to me, come to me because your child was being mishandled in school or had been misassigned a uh, special education uh, uh, tag or you, you, you've come to me because your kid got picked up and is in the juvenile justice system or your kid is an adult and got picked up and isn't being handled properly. And every time I've shown up and I will continue to show up to the level and ability I can. But what I'm saying is now is a time we need to move. We need to stop waiting on somebody else to fix what we can. Uh, I think I've given enough in the areas that I have invested myself in to show the possibilities. With the few people that I've been able to touch, massive things have happened, great things have happened. I'm excited about what they are doing, but they're a small portion of this population. And the thing is, nobody is exempt from being helped. I don't believe that. I believe there are some people that may not be reached because of, of XYZ, but I believe everybody is reachable. And you have to believe that if you're going to be someone who is going to reach people, you have to believe in them. You have to sit up. Yeah, there are going to be some that just won't get it, but you don't get to choose. Well, I'm not helping you because you come from here. I'm not helping you because of this. No, I'm going out there and I'm going to do what I'm doing. And yes, yes, Dr. Wallace, you need to. Yes, I get all of that. But at the same time, if people would have felt that way about me, I wonder where I would be. I'm not here because I figured this all out on my own. I'm here because God strategically placed people in my life that touched me at the right time, at the right moment, that inspired me, that encouraged me, that pushed me, that saw things in me that I did not see in myself. And I see it in these babies. I see it in these kids. I see it in these broken women that I work with. I see it in these confused, frustrated, and angry men that I work with. I'm not leaving them by the wayside. But I am going to ask for help. Something else that I'm doing differently that has been suggested to me uh, for some time, and I've always said, no, I'm doing it. Um, I have never, ever paid myself through the Odyssey Project. Matter of fact, I've poured money into it. Uh, I've funded the vast majority of everything that goes on with it. But I've, I've never paid myself. Um, and so what I did is I created a way for the people who appreciate the work I do to bless me personally. It's not a demand. It's not something I'm putting impression on you, but it's an opportunity. If you believe in what I'm doing and you want to show some love from now on, that's going to also be a link for that. Again, per personally, I prefer you support the programs that help the people, but also I will, you know, I'm, I'm, that's the way that, you know, you can sit up and you can show love and bless me. Again, I'm not demanding it. I'm not insisting upon it. But I, I think that I have earned the right to accept it if you want to gift me or show love or bless whatever word you want to use. It's up to you. Um, but everything that comes in for the organization goes to the organization. And it's so underfunded that it's unreal. And I'm still here. That's the blessed part about it. I am still standing despite it all. So look, uh, again, I am calling on you. Uh, don't let this pass by. Don't let this be one of those moments where it's the next person to give, the next person again. No, we need to hit 10,000. And the thing is, 
there's there are a couple of people out here that might be able to do that all at once. There are a couple of people out here that can go very deep into their pockets and make it happen. The thing is, we simply don't move on code. Uh, I shared something with you guys, I believe it was yesterday or maybe the day before. Uh, uh, a quote that uh, Musa Ali quoted um, someone else, but basically it just says, Our community refuses to rally. Uh, to rally to support or rally for uh, our best and brightest um, and I agree there's so many things out there that we are out there fighting to do and the vast majority is the focus on things that have no intrinsic value uh, things that are sensational in nature but bring no true power and we get fixated on those things and we lose sight of the things that are foundational, the things that we need to focus on. I've been talking about building strong black men. I've been talking about restoring the black family. I've been talking about healing generational trauma. I've spent literally years outlining how trauma is being passed down genetically, um, underlying, underlining the impact of epigenetics in uh, lifetime outcomes in health, finance, and behavior. I mean, this thing is big, and I've given it all I have, and I will continue to do so. It's my love. It's my passion. Um, one thing I will not do is I will not go to the grave having left work undone that I could do because I'm disenfranchised, because I'm frustrated, because it's not going my way. The one thing you never see me do is sitting up whining. I tell you what's on. I tell you what's going wrong. I tell you what I plan on doing about it. And then I go do it. Or do it to, to the point to where I've given everything I've got. But I won't take it to the grave. I won't take potential and capacity to the grave. I guarantee you that. So again, look in the description box. Show your love. Those of you who choose to give, and just to give you an idea, and the vast majority has been given by one person. I think we're, for the entire year this year, somewhere around 1200 bucks. So for the people who think I do this because I'm getting over, I'm getting paid, 1200 bucks is what, what, do you actually think we're helping and doing things for people with that? And the significant portion of that is one person. You know, there's people who give 25 here, 30 there. But significantly, it's one person and an, a, a, an old client donated $200 recently. But everything else is predominantly one person. And thank you for what you've done. You know who you are. I guess I could say your last name is Phillips. But that's it. That's it. $1,200 something dollars. Unless I missed something somewhere and I, I pulled it because I just wanted to see. And anybody that thinks that what you see me do, if you go to the site and you look at what we're doing and you think that can in some way facilitate what we do, let me know. And yet here we are. So again, I'm calling on it. Make this the day that's different than any other time. Show some support. Like I said, I love the kids I work with. I love uh, providing support. I love being in the throes of making a difference. And so here I am, again, standing here saying, let's do something different. Um, so again, I am going to get off of here. Um, you got several ways to give. If you give via Cash App, just put what program do you want it to go towards research do you want it to go towards black men lead um or what 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 specifically you want it to go for uh any other programs or you can just put in general in there and it will be designated to the programs that are most in need um but again the other links are pretty specific you can give generally to the odyssey project or you can get a black man lead or you can give to the research program or now you can actually uh, offer a gift of appreciation to me, which again, isn't something I'm demanding or whatever, but I think I've earned it. Uh, on that note, look, I'm out of here. 
Uh, once again, thank you for your time. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.